Uh, John Walker was the only ripoff Captain America. Check this out. Is that underwear on my head? What was I doing? I don't know. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. The finale of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is here, and today we're going to talk about all of the spoiler-filled things that happened, so I need you guys in the comments down below. How did you feel about this finale? Did it wrap up every storyline like you hoped it would? And if you enjoy these videos, drop that thumbs up, and we'll come back with the next Star Wars shows and Loki. Let's get into this episode. So, we start out figuring out what's in the box, and what was in the box was the Wakandan Captain America suit given to Falcon, swooping in in the red, white, and blue with vibranium, almost said adamantium, uh, wings, a shield, and a decked out suit that looks pretty sweet on him, uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed that moment, that reveal. I think we were all really looking forward to that. It was uh, enjoyable. Then we get into this giant battle that was set up in the last episode uh, with the Flag Smashers, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, John Walker comes in at a point, and even Sharon Carter, who is, let's go ahead and get into this, the Power Broker. Part of me thought it could be a bait and switch, but in a discussion I had last week and I said, yeah, she's most likely the power broker. You know, oftentimes shows will have red herrings where they lead us in one direction and, and kind of switch it up at the last second. I thought that could be the case here, but no, she is the one that is kind of pulling a lot of strings here. And then we hear at a point that Carly and the Flag Smashers actually worked for her and then went Rogue, which is a bit of an interesting backstory, and it does add another dynamic to Carly and that entire group. Now, my one major flaw with this series thus far has been the Flag Smashers and their story and their lack of development slash buildup. Now, this could be due to reshoots. We heard that they had an entirely different storyline laid out, and because of certain things that had to do with a pandemic, they switched that up. And it is unfortunate in a way because I do feel like their story was uh, lackluster to say the least, and it's not, you know, the thing that came together in the finale that really blew me away. They had their mission, they tried to accomplish their mission, going after the GRC, and of course, uh, feeling very strongly about their goals and values and the way they go about things. So, that was made very clear in the finale, and I do appreciate that. Uh, and we do get that moment with Sharon, Carly, and Batrock, who just, you know, kind of gets shot in the face by Sharon. I knew at that moment, you'll see in my reaction video, that had to be a moment where she established that she is the power broker and she's willing to do what it takes and we know this we saw it in the episode where we finally got some action from her uh, but she did it she shot Batrock Carly shot her and Falcon came in right after that power broker reveal I mean, just five seconds earlier and he could have heard hey oh she's the power broker probably shouldn't let her um, turn back into Agent Carter and now we see from that post credit scene that we'll talk about here in just a second that she is going to be infiltrating shield sword Whoever she's going to be working for now, uh, oh my goodness. So that's setting up for some crazy things in the future, but we'll get back to that here in just a second. I want to kind of talk more about this huge battle that takes place, and we get a lot of uh, Captain America showcasing what he can do, and both verbally and physically showing us that he is Captain America now. It's one of those things where he has to make up for physical strength because he doesn't have the super soldier serum with wits, and uh, skill, but also utilizing what is given to him with the wings and the shield. And he does a really good job at that, uh, even though I wouldn't say, you know, maybe he's the most powerful guy I've ever seen. Uh, he's very agile. Uh, we see a great battle in the air, very reminiscent to what we got in the first episode. But we also get these moments with Bucky. Now, I could have used more Bucky in this episode. That's for sure. Uh, we do kind of clear up the storyline with his book, how he's marking off the individuals that he's trying to make up for his past, and uh, I really enjoyed that. I kind of had a hunch he would go back and tell some of the people that it was actually him, the Winter Soldier, the entire time, and we see him confront uh, the old man who lost uh, the loved one, and I, I loved that moment. It was a great moment. He sees the girl he went on the date with him, just like, come on, Bucky get back into it. Uh, but it was nice to see. But in terms of Bucky's presence in the actual battle at the beginning, I could have used maybe just a bit more, but that dynamic is very good. But then we have John Walker coming in. We saw the post credit scene last week where he's constructing and spray painting his shield and suit. And, you know, it was very quick. I could have used 
a longer, maybe more epic introduction, but he comes in and establishes, all right, I'm here, and I'm here to fight. And he is just not having it with the Flag Smashers. And at a point, he kind of joins Bucky and Sam. We see that moment when uh, the vehicle is falling. We see all those people are going to die, and John Walker attempts to save them. So this episode didn't necessarily play out in that way, like I thought it would, because I thought John Walker would go to the bad side full on with his uh, just aggression and anger towards becoming the next Captain America. But even even he kind of accepts that when we see Sam give his great speech to the members of the GRC. Um, he kind of stands back and says, OK, I now see that he is, will be, should be Captain America. And I am, as Val calls him a bit later on. U.S. agent. And we knew we would get that reveal. I've been saying it for, what, six weeks now. Uh, John Walker is U.S. agent, and we know his allegiance now lies with Val. Now, where is this going, right? We understand that Val has a very deep-rooted history in the comics when it comes to being a double, well, even a triple agent, uh, history with Nick Fury, and it's almost like she is the opposite of Nick Fury because she's going around. We'll see those cards that she's handing out. I have a feeling, and we had this discussion. I was actually on a discussion with uh, Heavy Spoilers, and we were talking about maybe Val will be uh, like the anti Nick Fury, where she goes around and uh, kind of recruits this team of super soldiers and heroes and villains, well, really anti heroes. Now, are they going to be the bad team, or are they going to be? A team that will do some good things and will do some bad things. And who's going to be its members? Well, if the rumors are true, Val will be most likely in Black Widow. Could she recruit someone like a Taskmaster? And could we see U.S. Agent and Taskmaster on a team together? We also know that Zemo is in the raft and we cut to the raft. And we know that those remaining super soldiers, parts of the Flag Smashers, are heading that way. But no, no, no. Zemo gets uh, his butler or his old friend and to do what needs to be done and to get his last laugh, as Val says. And another thing that um, is leading into Zemo, and again, I, I was hoping maybe we get got a little General Thunderbolt Ross in this episode because we know he's the guy over the raft and can't wait to see all the villains in the raft like Abomination. Maybe they'll come together and create the Thunderbolts eventually. Oh, I would love to see that and have Zemo kind of be one of the heads of that. But um, I think that's setting up nicely there, even though I thought that maybe we would get a tease. And then we see, uh, kind of cutting back to that speech with Falcon, Isaiah Bradley looking at this now as Sam Wilson, a Captain America, a black man who has taken the mantle, taken the shield, and he's just kind of, he's come around, he's kind of mesmerized by that. And... Sam's conversation with him a bit later was uh, was was telling, and I, I truly believe that was such a special moment, especially when Sam says, I've got to show you something. He takes him into the museum, and you see this statue of Isaiah Bradley, and you see kind of this um, uh, a monumental space devoted to what he did and the history there, and I just thought that was so freaking beautiful. Uh, give this man who played Isaiah Bradley... All the Emmys for his supporting role. It was so special. One of my absolute favorite moments of the episode. Uh, I love to see it. So they tied that storyline off nicely. They brought back in John Walker and gave us kind of uh, a place where he is going to be in the future. I'm just curious where exactly he ends up. Sharon Carter, we now know that she is the power broker. As expected, they didn't really throw us a curveball there. But... What's Sharon going to do now that she's back in where she used to be? That she now has um, all of that knowledge and she's kind of uh, got some bad motivations. Sharon Carter is full on Hydra infiltrating shield, like very reminiscent to what we got in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And we see that in this post credit scene. And whether it be the Flag Smashers or John Walker or Val or Isaiah Bradley or all of these storylines that they had to get to in this finale. Um, again, I don't think they quite nailed everything. I'm still very iffy on the inclusion of the Flag Smashers as a whole. Um, that death of Carly didn't quite have the emotional impact that I think it needed to have, only because I thought the character buildup was lackluster. Uh, no big problem with the actress there. She did a great job in the show. But again, there just needed to be more. 
But overall, we got some very iconic Captain America shots of Sam Wilson, which I really enjoyed. Um, and a lot of these storylines, Isaiah Bradley and Val and U.S. Agent John Walker, which maybe we needed a little bit more time devoted to him there. I thought a lot of those were handled well. I also love the fact that we kind of cut off Zemo's storyline in the last one because that would have just been something else, right, to throw in here and include. Um, so... I think the most important thing here is what do you guys think about this finale? Did it give you everything you wanted? Did you get those epic moments? Did you get an awesome action scene at the end? All of those things. Thank you so much for watching. Drop your thumbs up again if you enjoy these reaction videos or these review videos. My reaction video is coming a little bit later. I'm about to start editing that. So uh, stay tuned. And we are going to be doing a big spoiler discussion for this show as a whole this weekend. Come over, ask me questions. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to do that. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe to this channel. And uh, we're going to have a fun, fun time this weekend. You're the best. I'll see you soon.